Cut to camera five, and there we go. Beautiful. Looking good. I'm Looking good. We worked hard on that, right? Yes, we did. <laughs> We're actually going to go over why this shot looks so delicious. It's today. my favorite shot, but we got to tell them why. Yes. I'm just pushing Let's a couple more buttons to get ready here. More space. So this is what we call a macro lens because we can get two inches from Dan's face and it's still in focus. It's where you want to be. That's our first time. lesson of the day. There we go. Now we can cut back and forth. Today. Okay. Cool. Are we good? Let's let's get going. Uh, thank you guys for being here. We're gonna keep this pretty chill. I know uh, it's weird that we're talking with microphones. Like <laughs> I said, we're trying to record it for the rest of our team who yeah. couldn't make it tonight. So we want to hear our voices. So we have these. So if you want to come up and ask questions at the end, because we'll have a little Q and A, um, we will. Oh, we got we've, a crowd we've mics got too. A, we've got a microphone and some crowd mics. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, so just so you guys know, we're doing Thursday rehearsals again for, um, for the band, and then the last Thursday of every month, we're going to make time for a workshop just like this, and uh, so we're going to try and do one of these every month, and so if you know people or you yourself want to dive into different parts of ministry, specifically production, or if you want to dive into the music stuff, we'll have these regularly. I think over in the foyer, they're doing... Uh, they're doing music theory. Uh, they're doing a number system theory tonight which is, sounds really, sounds a lot crazier than it really is, but my goal would be pretty soon, we're going to try to put together a calendar that'll show you for the next like four or five months what workshops are happening for each, because we'll do one production workshop and one music workshop, um, and let people go back and forth. So next month, we might do something diving a little bit uh, into lighting. Um, at some point, we might, every once in a while, we might do a combined workshop night, um, and then a couple times a year, probably three times a year or so, we'll just try to do like a like a team night with all of our teams to just get together and hang out and get to love each other. Imagine so, that. Imagine that. Imagine yeah. friendship. Yeah. And then uh, in case we got people that really wanted to be here tonight but couldn't, I'm sure like once we get through a sound one, a lighting, we'll probably have one of these again and have them routine so we can get all of our operators totally dove in into the nerdy camera world. I'm super stoked about this. This is going to be pretty chill. If you guys have questions, just ask. But honestly, I kind of pictured tonight. What on earth? Is that me? Might have been me. Is it the beard? It could be the beard. Could it be the beard. <laughs> this might be better. Okay. Um, I, I'm pretty much going to treat tonight as if I had like, or if Ruben had or Dan had or anybody had like, an hour with our camera operators to go through like really what we're looking for and um, yeah, without the time crunch of it being like 4.30 in the morning or what it feels like 4.30 in the morning. But we're also gonna dive in a lot of like philosophical stuff, stuff that does not just apply in here, but stuff that you can take with you or if you're just some random person that has a nice camera and you wanna learn how to dive into it better so you're not always shooting on auto mode, it's kind of one of the stuff we wanted to dive into. Our big goal, too, is that this would apply to uh, videography and photography. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we'll probably get more specialized as time goes on, but really the idea tonight is we're, um, we wanted to really start with the fundamentals of um, a bulk of what we're talking to now, tonight, um, um, probably most of the times. That's what Adam spent a ton of time uh, doing the prep work on, is we're going to be spending a lot of time talking about composition right now. Mm -hmm. How do we... How do we get? The, how do we frame the best shots possible? And then a little more into that, like, how do we translate that into what we do on a Sunday, both photography and videography? Because every church, a lot of churches either have they either have their own distinct style, they copy someone else's distinct style, or they're just winging it. And we definitely don't want to do the third one. Right. Um, and a lot of it, honestly, for us, started with the second, with looking at looking at the way other churches have done it and seeing what we liked and didn't. Um, and hopefully we were able to finally turn that into our own, our own style. So we've got a lot of examples tonight. I think we have some examples in the PowerPoint of things we, things we've seen that we've enjoyed, um, mm -hmm. especially photography. We got a little photography hall of fame in here yeah. tonight. Yeah. So. Uh, so let's dive right in. Um, so we're gonna first off. This this is, a lot of this is kind of vague. We've got some solid examples. Um, a lot of this is personal taste. Uh, we're gonna go over just generic stuff of what we've seen that we like um, and just most rules that we want to see from you guys whether you're on a camera in here or you're just taking a camera outside or taking a camera to Old Town or going on like uh, I don't know an outreach event and want to get pictures of that so we're going to start off I'm sure a lot of you guys if not all of you have heard of the rule of thirds um, 
And basically all that means is you are going to take your screen, put a big fat tic-tac-toe sign on it, or imaginary tic-tac-toe sign, which all the cameras in here already have, and that's kind of like a really good starting point of um, composing your frame. This is a great example. We've got a beautiful foreground. We've got the tree there. It's on that uh, right third. And then we can also see the, up, the top to bottom composition too. You see that horizon is pretty much just right on that bottom third line too. And that's uh, it's just a good way to practice. All of your shots don't have to be pointed directly at the person or the subject that you're shooting. You, um, there's, I like to think about it as uh, when you compose a frame or a shot, um, it doesn't have to be symmetrical, but it's still nice that it's balanced. You can see that the foreground here, even though it's off to the right, it's still balanced out by the really juicy contrast of that sunset in the back. So does that kind of make sense? It's asymmetrical, but it's still balanced. Here's another example. You can see there's no lines on this one, but you can see it, still see the pretty building in the, in the, on the right side, balanced by the balloons, the clouds, the sun. Here's one of my favorites. Look at that right there. We have a lot of The Office references I know. tonight. If you don't, if you'll, you, you'll catch that soon. If you are a fan of The Office, it is a master class on composition. Like, so th this is even a better example. You see Dwight's off center, yeah? But look at how they balance this frame to kind of keep Interest, like, we're obviously mostly looking at Dwight on the left side, but it's still interesting on the other side. There are so many opportunities, whether you're outside the auditorium or in here, where, yeah, you can be shooting at a, a singer, but you can maybe offset them to the side a little bit and get something else in the background that's interesting to look at. Or maybe you got a singer with their guitar. Maybe you can put the singer on the left side of the frame and get the hand of her guitar on the right side. This is kind of stuff like that, which we can... Uh, one of, the, one of the things where this comes in handy, too, is um, when we get into moments like hosting, um, we've kind of, because we do the double host so often with the two people on stage, we kind of moved away from doing, from doing boxes on the side. Um, but we've had times where, especially during a live show, if we want to have content um, where we can't really fit it at the bottom, we need more room to write out or we got a picture, um, having your subject on the left side um, gives you space on the right to put something else um, to where we don't all, yeah, we don't always have to frame a host or a preacher or anything like that center. And it gives you, gives you a lot of space to be creative, come up, come up with something cool for the right yeah. side. Yeah. 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 We really like our goal with tonight in general is to empower you guys to like take more creative initiative and don't always rely on, um, like a video director maybe spoon feeding, okay, give me this shot, give me this shot. Because once you like start playing around and having fun with it, then man, the director just has like candy off a shelf to pick from to put the, all the shots up. Um, real fast, let's switch over. Take a letter box off, please. Yep. How dare you cover up my plain PowerPoint. Um, PowerPoint? So we, we all know about headroom, talking room. Uh, I'm just gonna go over it just to make sure it's um, pretty clear. This is, too much headroom. This is a good amount of headroom. <laughs> the, I've struggled with defining this for years, and a, it's kind of a spectrum. The wider your shot is, the less headroom you need. So if I have, like say I'm on camera four way in the back over there, and my shot has the whole entire stage, I'm obviously gonna have like 50 feet of headroom above Sean, and that's still okay. However, if like say, let's look at this guy again, let's look at Jim, since we're much closer, I usually start with about a fist's worth of headroom above their head. That's a decent starting point when, whenever you're in like a full body shot to a medium close up shot, which we'll go over in a second. Anything on that? Um, I don't know if your, power, if your slideshow talks about it, but the wrench that we throw in the system when we letterbox everything. Oh yeah, I don't have one on that. So um, on Sundays, you probably you notice the on there. that um, uh, preaching looks a little bit different for Oops, us sorry. than uh, than worship. Um, during preaching, we have the uh, we have the full frame available to us for preaching. To where, um, if Adam, uh, you want to stand on the stage real quick, Adam, yeah. As Ruben runs to camera one, um, we're going to talk about the framing that the framing that happens during preaching. You want to give us like a mid shot, uh, Ruben. Originally, 
during a, originally we left the letterbox on the whole service, but we discovered that doesn't really work for our venues because the moment I put the letterbox on, I've just taken away a significant portion of uh, their on-screen real estate. And especially in a room like, um, in a room like the auditorium uh, or like Old Town where they've got a giant floor to ceiling screen that they're watching, uh, that they're watching the sermon on, um, I've taken away space that they could use to help people feel more immersive. So that's why during, when worship ends, we take this guy off and give it the full frame. Um, the reason we do this during worship, um, it's not just because we're a big fan of black bars, um, even though they look pretty cool. One of the things, uh, one of the things it does, especially as we have a lot of these motion shots during worship and uh, we use a more cinematic looking frame rate during our, uh, during our teaching, um, what this does is this just kind of helps us with the feel, of, to help worship be more distinct from the message. The idea is that we can have two separate look and feels like when we're teaching and we're doing a more, um, you know, the focus is on that individual person who's up there speaking, we're giving the entire frame for them. And then when we're in worship and we're just getting a little more creative, um, looks a little more cinematic. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let's, let's go over um, oh, one more thing while we're kind of dealing with headroom. Um, I gotta go fix a classroom problem. Oh, those are almost my joy. Favorite. Okay. Um, we'll see about that. Okay, uh, so aside from having headroom, um, we also probably talk a lot about lead room or talking room, and that is uh, whenever your shot is getting somebody from the side and they are facing either the left or right of your frame, you always wanna make sure that you leave a healthy gap in front of them and not behind them. When it's behind them, it looks like they're about to leave the screen and it just feels all, I don't know, whack. Um, so always keep in mind, like if you're on a camera three or even on a camera two as well, um, or if you're just out and about with a camera in your hand, make sure, give them ample lead room. Uh, real fast, we're gonna go through all the different framing sizes and um, you hear us a lot talking about, oh, can I get a close-up on this? Can I get a full body shot on this? Can I get a wide shot? Uh, this is the set in stone definition of what all these should look like. And the first one uh, is the only one we're gonna go over that isn't actually about a, a size of a shot, it's about a function, and this is the establishing shot. Um, and this is more of the reason we have an establishing shot is to let people who are watching our broadcast know like the environment we're in. Like what's the surrounding? Are we outside, are we inside? Are we in a big room, a little room? So uh, for example, it shows the scale of things. You know, in Star Wars we can see how huge the Star Destroyer is and we can kind of see Ray sliding down. It just helps put us into the scene. A good example for this, this was our uh, establishing, shot, establishing shot this past Sunday. Uh, use a good old wide shot on camera too. We can see the stage, we can see the lights, but we can also see how the singers scale to that. You can't really establish where the scene is taking place off of a super close-up shot. So I always think of, I like to let people know where we are in the scene, uh, try and immerse them in the room as much as possible with that first shot. And now we'll start going over the actual sizes. Wide shot, there's an example. And there's an example of what it looks like on a Sunday. Uh, we can use a white shot as an establishing shot, or you can use something else. Uh, but this just shows surrounding the scale of the subject, in this case of being Sean. Uh, this is also a really good example of using the rule of thirds. If you guys put the example of your tic-tac-toe there, we can see Sean is on that lower uh, left third, and then we can see the focus of the logo on the upper right third. Again, not symmetrical but it's still balanced. Full shot, we often refer to this as a full body shot. Head to toe, get your subjects all the way to the top, all the way to the bottom, and this is what camera two looks like with a full body shot with Sean. This is a medium full shot. This is a nickname the cowboy shot, because in the good old westerns, it was just wide enough to get their holster in there, and this is probably what I would say is the majority of the time. Ooh. There's Sean. 
He's our favorite cowboy. He's our favorite cowboy. Uh, this is one of our most default shots, especially during the message. Go to medium shot, a little bit tighter. This is above the belt. There's our boy Miles. And you notice we go to this one, usually during prayer time as it gets more intimate. As the singers might be a distraction with a wider shot, we push in closer to Sean. Hmm? Oh, yeah. And so that our stage manager can get the podium off as well. Uh, and then this is about as tight as we go for the message. Um, I don't know, we might, I don't know. The, the, the issue with going closer is since this is the same content that gets pushed to our campuses, like, can you imagine a super close-up shot of Sean going to a six-foot screen in Old Town? Like, that would be a little freaky. So we the, usually... The caveat is this could change someday because eventually we'll be getting to the place where this room online and the campuses can all be seeing something different. And then that lets us get a little more creative with what each room requires. Yeah, 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 yeah. But right now we have to kind of, uh, we gotta kind of split, we gotta split the difference a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so here's the real fast review. So we've got the establishing shot, we've got wide shots, We've got uh, full shots or full body shots. We've got cowboy shots. And then we've got our um, medium shots. And then moving forward, other examples. Probably not going to use on a Sunday in here, but please use them uh, if you've got a camera and you're out and about. Medium close-up. Got our favorite bad guy right there. Also notice, rule of thirds, yeah, he's not in center. It's because there's two balance points here. And then we got our close-up. Here he is. Here's Johnny. Here's Johnny. There's another good example of a close-up. Here's an over-the-shoulder close-up. And then finally, we've got extreme close-ups, which is very close. An, an actual example, because obviously you're not going to zoom in on Mars face this much, uh, we might use something like this on a Sunday. This might be a great shot for a camera five or a camera six to hit. Um, but yeah, those are all the different shot sizes. So whenever you hear your director calling out for those, that's what you should be giving them. Anything on shot sizes? Um, I think that's the biggest, um, our, our real goal is that, um, you start to also, uh, we try to watch depending on, if you're like a solo shooter, say you're a photographer, you're probably in the course of a Sunday going to do close to all of these shots yeah. because you're a little less constrained. Like you don't have a letterbox, you, you're dealing with still targets and you're capturing, you're capturing like standalone pieces of the experience. Whereas when you're... Uh, when you're on video, if you're on camera five, you're probably never going to do an establishing shot. Right. Um, because that's just not, like, we have other cameras for that. So the question then becomes, as you look at, and we'll talk about this a little bit later tonight, but this is the preview of, like, depending on the role of what you're doing, if you're on a Sunday and you're part of our multi-cam team, part of our, part of our live video team, it's really determining what your role is based on your camera. And you pretty much stick to that. Um, and what's so what's cool is you start to realize, hey, if I'm on camera three, like most of what I'm doing is like the medium close-ups, those kind of things. If I'm on camera one during the sermon, I'm never gonna get to get that extreme close-up shot. No. Like it's just not gonna work. We've both had COVID, so I can, <laughs> I can do that. Um, anybody so far have any sort of questions before we get to the next part? Cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this, uh, we've kind of been going over a lot of this. We've been doing good. Um, here's just some examples, uh, just more examples of balanced shots of the foreground versus the background. You can see, again, split thirds. Split thirds. <laughs> this one's one of my favorites. Like, this is a Renaissance painting. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is... <laughs> So, one, we can see... I wish we had a laser the, pointer for you right I, now. I wish. So we can see the balance here, right? There's Michael right on the right side. Second most important thing your eye is drawn to. There's Jim balanced on, on the left third. And we can see that uh, none of our subjects or none of the people in there are stacked on top of each other. We can see everybody clearly. And that's something I would love everybody to be aware of. Um, grab the camera back. Uh, can you put me on five? You're five? Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
What would be good? Yeah, get on stage, Dan. So let's say, no, 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 keep Pykel there. And then why don't you stand uh, next to Pykel? Oh, yeah, that's good, too. So let's say I'm on camera three, or any really camera, really, uh, and I'm trying to get a nice shot of Pykel here. This is exactly the kind of composition I would want. I do not want stacked subjects, because it's like, uh, does Pykel have four arms? Is there something going on behind him? It, it feels really like, uh, what am I supposed to be looking at here? I wish I could see the person behind. We want to offset them. And so uh, as a handheld camera or a photographer, that would be you grabbing your camera and moving. Uh, if you're on a tripod, find something else. <laughs> if you're on one or two or four, that's uh, find something else. Sorry, I'll zoom out so, to make the viewers not nauseous. And we've tried to do our best with the band and the way this stage works to actually have it set to avoid some subject overlap. Yeah. Ooh, it's the Mariah reason why the... Mariah, can we get Fader 4 up? Thank you. It's the reason why this platform right here for guitar player is not in front of this platform right here for the keys player. Right. Um, well, let's do some example shots. Stand right there, Dan. Can we here? have a volunteer, please? Brooklyn! Congratulations, you already learned how to play the guitar and you're playing rhythm guitar today. Then I am camera five. I can walk out here. You have permission to do that. Uh, side note, if you are a stage roamer, the thing you're not allowed to do is walk in front of these lights because that just tells everybody that you're walking right here. We've set up the stage very stealthily to where all of our handheld operators can go behind the platforms and you can get away with doing jumping jacks back there, doing cartwheels, and no one will see. Anyway, so stacking subjects, red flag, stacking subjects. Yay or nay? Nay. No, 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 no. You want to either get over here. Let's see, does this look good? Yeah, this would look good too. Uh, and then you can do awesome stuff. Uh, we'll dive into zoom lenses in a little bit, but we can do cool things like uh, racking back and forth between the people. There's Dan, there's Brooklyn, there's Dan. Dan, what are you playing? Is I don't like know, this is keys, accordion? right? <laughs> okay, awesome. Uh, anyways. So that, that's something you really want to be aware of, is, is you do not want to layer your subjects. Or even if it's stuff like, um, I don't know, like lights or, or something, if Dan was like... If I was right here, for some reason, or like Brooklyn's right here, <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> Let's say, for instance, no one walk over here live on a Sunday, but we can kind of see that there's that pillar behind Brooklyn... And it's like, eh, what's it doing over there? This looks way more balanced to have it split on your thirds. Or what I was talking about earlier, give Brooklyn that, uh, that lead room, the talking room, and just crop it out entirely. Because this looks more natural than if we're over here, it's like, oh, she's leaving the frame. She's running off to the right. It doesn't look natural. Uh, does all that kind of make sense? Any questions on any of that? Kind of, yeah, because it's like, what is this metal thing growing out of her head? Like, <laughs> uh, it's not the end of the world if it's something like that, uh, but we really want to avoid that with people, because uh, then it's like, what am I supposed to look at? I'm I've had a, there, there's a shot um, that I wish I would have downloaded before. It's off one of my favorite, like, there's a, there's a meme account called, like, Worship Fails, and it's like, Church is submitting like when the like the most random stuff happens during their service, and you have those moments where like pastor standing here. So Sean's wrapping up his sermon, and Brooklyn is the guitar player. She's Marlena. Come be Marlena for a sec. So normally we have Mar stand like right here for a response, so that if I'm right here, uh, you want to you want to oh. be camera again. Here I go. So Ugh. if I'm uh, if I'm Sean. Um, and I'm wrapping up my service, um, and we're really, um, we're really close here. Um, so I've got Brooklyn standing there, um, and you, Adam is pretending camera he's one? camera one. He's okay. directly in front of me. I'm talking. It's okay if, like, Brooklyn's setting up and, like, her elbow's in the shot, whatever. Like, we try to get close enough to where we don't see the people. But if Brooklyn's standing right here, um, and she's, like, a guitar player, like, stick your arms out, Brooklyn... Like, all of a sudden, I've got extra arms that we don't know about. 
<laughs> and so, like, it just, it's it, looks, it, it looks odd. It's a little different because my extra arms are a lot smaller than I am. <laughs> um, but that's where we, not just during worship, but especially during speaking, uh, subject overlap can get you into a little bit of a, little bit of a weird look. Um, and it's the same with photography too, because really what ha- especially, I feel like in photography, what happens is when your subjects overlap like that, it's very easy for that, whatever's in the background to be a distraction to what you're trying to say with the picture. So uh, yeah, that's, that's overlap. Let's look at some, uh, some of our Hall of Fame. Thank you, Brooklyn. Yes, excellent job, Brooklyn. <laughs> Here's some of the Hall of Famers that, uh, of photography. Um, and we can, let's take a look. Let's talk about what we like about this. This is uh, Mary's shot, I believe. Mm-hmm. It's got a lead room. That's right. I see, uh, I wish we could see it closer, but um, it's really sharp focus on Mike. Like if you, if you look at the, the keyboard keys that are closest to us, you see they're kind of hazy. And then as it gets closer to his fingers, they're super sharp in focus. And that has something to do with f-stop, which we'll go over in a little bit. Um, and personally, we oftentimes we get told that iPads, music stands, they're very distracting, and you don't notice the iPad at all. Right, right. Uh, here's another one. Beautiful. See how Gene isn't perfectly in the middle? He's got lead room. He is on the left third. Do we know who that one was? Uh, I don't remember. Right. Might be Grace. Someone with a... Good eye. Yeah, exactly. Like she, we got multiple subjects, and even the even the guitar player in the back. That's something I didn't notice till just now. Yeah, that guitarist catch. in the back is like right in between Gene and Mar, which is really cool. And I mean, Gene and Mar obviously aren't overlapping either, but um, I don't have a guitar sticking out. Even though I've got a light like shooting out of like Mar's throat <laughs> for like her angelic voice, like. <laughs> I don't have like a guitar neck sticking out of your throat, which is, yeah, would be worse. Uh, here's, I like this one a lot. So uh, this is a good use of, of kind of unique foreground and background, or this one actually has three layers. Like it's, it's so close to the first foreground. I don't know if that's somebody's arm or a tower or a curtain or something, but it's kind of like, yeah, it's blocking off a lot of what's going on to the right, but that's forcing our eyes to focus on what's really important in this image. There's Caleb. There's his beautiful guitar. And then in the back, we can see um, what's going on. Big old Egyptian forearms. Nice. (laughs) Here's another great example. Pretty good. Um, There's a lot happening in this photograph. And sometimes I like, so that's another thing we always take into consideration. Like sometimes like, it's really cool when you have a photo where there's only one thing going on. Like those are special in and of itself. But what's really cool is this picture. What I like the most about this is it manages to have a lot going on um, while still drawing focus in the middle. And there's some things that like you can nitpick about it. The right side is a little bit overexposed, but I almost feel like it doesn't matter because our focus is on what's happening there in the middle. And that's such like an intimate moment Yeah, that like it feels like, we know that those moments aren't happening in a bubble, that there's a lot happening around them, which is what's really cool that that's like dead center with all this cool activity happening in the background. It's very cool. Yeah, uh, especially if you run cameras in this room, you're going to run into, uh, you're not always going to have the best lighting conditions when, uh, when you're either trying to broadcast or, or get photos. And we're very unforgiving, or <laughs> not unforgiving, we're very... Cruel. Yes. <laughs> to our photo and video operators. Yes, That's why we're having nights like tonight, so we can learn how to. Uh, the thing I that. do like about it is the the silhouette. Mm. Obviously, we can't see it now because we're kind of far from the screen. It, you can almost see Scott's expression. Yeah. You know, so like even though it isn't the best lit and the right is a little overexposed, you see like the silhouette of like two people meeting, and mm. that there's, I don't know who the gentleman is who's hugging him. But on the left side coming in, the light just so happens to hit his eyesight yeah. like that. And you can kind of see them exchanging this, like, expression, you know? Yeah, this gets an A-plus in composition for me. I mean, it, it reminds me, like, how all, all the people, there's so many people in these shots. 
even though it's a different tone and mood, obviously, but we can see every single person in this room, and they've all got adequate headroom, so we're not like giving anybody haircuts or chopping their heads off, yet uh, the focus is still dead center. This is, uh, I think, a good, rare example of where a rule of thirds doesn't need to apply. Uh, let's keep going. Beautiful shot right here of Mitch. We can see how the logo kind of frames his head. It's not, if you think of him as one subject and the text as another subject, uh, they're not totally overlapping. Um, this, this is Sadie, right? Yeah. It's a play on headroom, actually. It's a what? It's a play on headroom. Oh, yeah. Because if you look at it, yeah, yeah, yeah. the photo itself, he has a lot, but with the words, it's much smaller. And what's crazy is you can even see, like, if you look to the right, what do you notice in the frame? It takes you a second to see it, but camera three is in the frame. Boom. On the right side. But it's cool because, like, it, with it being blurry like that, um, it, it, you, you almost don't even notice that it's in the foreground. Mm -hmm. Me too. I, exactly. Yeah, you can, text. you can make something into something else. Yeah. Uh, this is my favorite shot. Number one right here. Boom. Yeah. That's also Sadie. Yeah. Way to go, Sadie. This to be is, fair, I should have edited out that exit sign. This is <laughs> this is one of our like highlight of the year shots. Yeah, this is except uh, the exit sign. It's a master class on on how to compose a shot. And you see, it's tough to see uh, with the projectors and the light, but you can see there's people in the foreground out of focus, and they just make this arched gateway to what is truly important. What's happening in this moment? You can see all the emotion, and luckily it was well lit. Uh, and then they're backdrop by the welcome home sign. It, it's just. The camera operator right there is almost sneaking up on this moment that's happening. Mm -hmm. It's like a, it's like a, it feels like it's either like a behind the scenes or like a, like a little secret window into what's happening, which mm -hmm. is really cool. I yeah. think it's great for people who couldn't make it like in person. It almost feels like. When I look at this shot, like I was in the room yes. and I was looking between a couple of people and I just happened to witness this moment that these guys don't even know I'm witnessing, you know? That's like the special thing that we get to see happen in person on a Sunday when someone accepts Christ. But like not everyone gets to be there for that. So it's right. almost like I feel like I was just there in that moment. We actually had a moment on Christmas Eve. I've been trying when I'm directing every once in a while. One of the roamers or camera three will capture somebody walking forward or capture somebody going up and screwing in their light bulb. And uh, yeah, it's just this real cool special moment that like we get to, especially like what's cool is the people online now get a, get a glimpse into this moment that's happening in the room and can feel a little more connected to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is our last example. You can see that tons of, of lead room. And this, was, this shot was taken at the perfect millisecond because we can see all four vocalists are perfectly spread. Like, yeah. normally this would be like right down the line, they'd all be stacked on top of each other, worst case scenario. But this person waited for the right moment and they all happened to be spread so none of them are stacked. Or they used burst mode. So that was Sam Dodd. Beautiful, Sam. Way yeah. to go. She did good. That's the joy of when you're doing photography using burst mode on your camera because you might not always get that perfect frame, but uh, you can get like 20 frames, and out of those 20 frames, maybe one of them is the perfect frame, which is cool. Dan, yeah. what's burst mode? I don't know what that is. Oops, that's oh, the wrong let's, camera. Let's talk about that photography-wise. Burst, uh, yeah, burst mode. Um, the cool thing about our, our photography cameras that we use around here is... Uh, I'm talking about the Sonys. This, we're not talking about these cameras right now. Yeah, our Sonys for photography, the reason we chose the cameras that we use for photography here, A, when, uh, when I moved us to Sony a few years ago, is mostly I really like the way Sony colors look. Um, but a big thing is that the two golden things are, A, they're wonderful in low light. So I can get a picture in a very dimly lit room without having a ton of grain um, because they've got, inc they got just incredible sensors in them. And then two, the burst mode is I can, normally when you take a picture, like if I'm on my iPhone and I take a picture, it's like click it, one, done. Or maybe like I push the button a few times 
um, and I might get that right frame or it might be delayed a little bit. When I got the Sony's on burst mode, if I hold down the button and I'm on like high, high rate burst mode, I could take like 30 pictures at once. And it's almost like if I'm on a camera here, it's like capturing every single individual frame so that I'm not missing one. I love to do that during baptism so that I'm not missing a moment. Um, I can just hold it down, capture all of them, and then make Mary sort through 100 pictures to find the one good one. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you say you like to do that when you haven't photographed a baptism in a long it's time. A, it has been a while. I've done some of the outdoor ones, but yeah. I don't get to do photography much anymore, which is kind of a bummer because it's kind of my first love. Uh, any questions? Any questions on any of this? Mm-hmm. And I got to keep track. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I'm, I'm trying to back up and looking behind me, and, and my brain's going, like, you're going to miss it or you're mm-hmm. going to lose that shot. And yeah. so it's just all of those things going through, going through my head. And so, I, you know, I don't know if you guys can that's it yes that's a great and we're actually gonna we're leading into that pretty soon about the different tools we can choose on our cameras that will help in different scenarios if we need to if we do need to get closer or if we, we are trying to snipe a rifle somebody all the way from the back in the room and what are the pros and cons of all that there there is on a sunday a lot of moving pieces that are happening at once which can get crazy at times because and especially during mix because it's not like you know, if, if you're on a Sunday morning, it's not like I can ask Sean to go back and do that again. Right. <laughs> or if, if, the, if, the, if, if the countdown hits zero and nobody's framed on Mar or whoever the worship leader is, like I can't ask Mar to restart because I didn't have a camera on her. <laughs> so really what it is, is it's just over time as we do this more and more, especially during rehearsal, um, but... Um, that's a lot of help from the director. Uh, when you, if you get into a role where you're doing directing, is really starting to get intimately aware of, of the flow of what's happening. And it takes some time because, but the cool thing is, is like, barring something crazy like a holiday, like our service flow doesn't really change, which is what's cool. Like you come in on a Sunday and we don't throw a curveball and do the sermon first. Or we don't like, we don't, we don't throw a curveball and have like the drummer leading worship. <laughs> That'd be fun. But like, we keep things, pre- the reason we keep things pretty structured and regimented is it's very, it makes it very easy to duplicate week after week. And so after time, like directors especially, like when I video direct, I'm, I like to be very intentional about, hey, if you're one of my moving cameras, camera five, I want you to start here or this is how the service is going to start. So I need this person ready to walk here, ready to zoom in, um, pick out the right lens for the application. I'm starting mm-hmm. to let um, my, like when I have a video team, I let my video people choose their lens, which is fun because you can have a little rock, paper, scissors challenge <laughs> and get the lens you want. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it is, I like, I agree with you wholeheartedly on that. It, it's, it's something that just comes with repetition in this room. Um, we all doing good? Do we want to take a breather for a sec before we jump into the next section, or? While we're waiting, can you talk about how Pico lost his nose? Can you know. give us a thrilling story? Very, um, he was on an well, Amazon safari in, uh, Porterville, and... If you've never met this, ball. if you've never really met this guy, his name's Pico. It's like Michael, but with a P. Um... And we use him as our, uh, as our fake little pastor. So we use him for um, a lot of, most of when we use him is for lighting design. When 
we don't, I don't want to have Marlena standing here all night, but if I know where I'm going to have her stand on a Sunday, I'll use him as a placeholder. A lot of times we like to do them with, with, a, with glasses and a hat just to test out shadows and test out brightness, but uh, yeah, he lost his nose in an unfortunate Voldemort accident. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We, we yeah, we're going to rename him Voldemort, but rip the homie. Michael's an important name to us. Because Adam and I watch a lot of Rick and Morty. <laughs> okay. Oh, do you want to talk about the, the endless abyss that happens when you do that shot? <laughs> this guy right here. My biggest pet peeve <laughs> on a Sunday is anytime the shots that we do, I'm okay if the center screen's in a shot because it's, Oh, it's cool. The center screen is meant to be environmental. It's not meant to be anything else. But when we have those moments where we get shots of the side screens while running camera, it's tough. Like, if you go to, a, go to camera three real quick, Adam. I'm not, if I get a little bit like this, I'm not as concerned because... Like, it's okay if I've got, like, Adam's foot in the bottom. Like, I'm not entirely worried if I got a little bit of that top screen. But the problem is the top screen is, a little, is always a little bit behind because, you know, there's a few, there's natural degrees of latency going from here into a video switcher by the time it gets to the screen. It's not, like, instantaneous. Latency is a fancy word for saying lag. delay. Yeah, or mm. lag. So... If you've got a little bit of it, it's not that crazy. But if I'm standing here, I've now got infinite atoms. And I just don't ever want that. We don't like that. So, so what should I do um, if I'm running camera three? You do everything you can to, to realize that your frame of vision, you've got a stage here. Um, and I try to especially, well, worship it helps too because uh, turn the letterbox on real quick. You have a natural friend in the letterbox because it's cutting off some of the screen already. Um, but I try to never have more than like that much screen, like a quarter of the screen in the frame if, if you have to. And I overcome that a couple ways. Like I can get closer to Adam. Yep. Um, I can move here. If I'm in the pit on a Sunday, I like, especially if I'm on this side, um, but really, if I'm on that side too, if I'm on camera five wirelessly, I actually, I hate these planners, but I like to use them as kind of a guide of if I'm the camera three operator, I'm not walking past this planner. Once I walk past this planner, I'm getting in the audience's way hardcore. And I'm getting in the worship leader's way. And all of a sudden, I'm probably getting into camera one's way. Um, because that's kind of a big thing for us too when we talk here about composition of shots, when we talk about our camera movement is there's nothing more annoying than I, I, I should have pulled up the video on my laptop, but I forgot. Um, there's a perfect video about this that I'll probably send to everybody. It was from a, it was an old John Stewart video. Um, but if I'm on camera three here, somebody come be my guinea pig here. So Jordan, you come be camera three, and you you know get some good shots of Adam. So she's on camera three, and I'm right here, and I got Adam, and all of a sudden, I've got a camera operator on my shot, <laughs> unintentionally, or I can see it. It happened last week on accident where I saw uh, we had camera five on a tripod on stage on the drums. And every once in a while, we'd see our other stage camera like walk in front of camera five when it was live. Or like, go ahead and go three, Adam. You mean camera. five? Yeah, go, um, no, go three. Five is on right now. Oh. If I'm right here, <laughs> and I walk in front of Jordan, Oops. <laughs> that's not cool. <laughs> so we do what we can to... Uh, Make sure that our movement doesn't get in the way of other people's movement. 
which is why, like, one of the, one of the biggest things, you, you're, you're good, Jordan, you can go ahead and set the camera down, thank you. I don't know how to. <laughs> sit on the chair. <laughs> one of the, one of the biggest things that's cool about a Sunday morning um, is all of us really are working together. Like, it's a really cool, like, I really love that scripture that talks about, like, one body with many parts, one body with many members. Like, if you think about it, especially on the camera team, like, the video director is only as good as his camera operators. Um, you can have a world-class video operator, but a bunch of cameras that are, you know, out of focus and not really on the same page, or a bunch of camera operators who all want to do their own thing, which will, that, that gets into our B word in a little bit. Yep. Um, like, there are things like that on a team that, don't, that, just, that just don't work. Um, it's the same with like, if I've, got, if I've got Mary on a Sunday who knows that she needs photos of the host like really badly because it's a new host and she wants to get shots of them and she needs it, um, but you've got, a, you've got a photographer who's like, but I really, really want pictures of the bass guitarist. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, that's cool, but pictures of the bass guitarist can't come at the expense of what the service needs, which is pictures of the host. So, and it's the same with camera operators. Like, our camera operators could be given gold, and the video director's just not focused on it, and you're missing out on some of those opportunities. Or, like, get into a bigger picture right there. Like, I could have this really awesome shot lined up right here in, like, a really quiet, intimate moment of the song where, like, the band's playing all calm and like it's a really great moment. And then all of a sudden, um, Mariah wants strobe lights. <laughs> and so I'm having this really like great intimate teaching moment. And then like there's chaos happening behind me. Um, that's like the biggest thing that like we really like this dress. Like the, the chemistry that we have as a team, like, the chemistry is so incredibly important. It's what I love the most about this team. And it's one of the biggest things that we always gotta be watching is like, it's so important for us to be able to be on the same page. And there's really, the, the, there's not a lot of room for like hurt feelings in a way. And, and here's what I'll explain by that. Talk about balance. Yeah, um, so in, in this room specifically, or in any broadcast situation, um, we've been getting closer to giving more concrete uh, assignments per camera. Um, but there's a, a lot of um, creative liberties you guys are encouraged to take. Um, for example, camera one, their job is to get like a hundred percent of the time, whoever is leading that moment, whether it's a host, a pastor, or a worship leader, they have to be in their shot. Whether it's a super wide shot or a super tight shot, um, hundred percent of the time. Most of that time, it is going to be one of those medium shots. Maybe a, a full shot sometimes, but most of the time it's a medium shot. Simultaneously while that's happening, there's very likely going to be someone else, uh, one of the other five camera operators that will also have that same person in their shot which gives the director two of the same shot to work with, and that's not useful. So whenever that happens, the director uses a term, or we're gonna start using a term called bounce, and pretty much a uh, cliff note version is, if you're not live and I tell your camera to bounce, just find something else. It doesn't mean I don't like your shot, it means we already have your shot taken care of by somebody else and we need you to find something new so that we're not what's called ghost cutting between the two same shots, which is very jarring. You, show, you wanna show a ghost cut real quick? Uh, what cameras do we wanna use? Sadie, come on stage. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna use, we're gonna use, uh, we're gonna use th uh, three and one, okay. and I'll do some zooming. Um, Who's go gonna ahead. switch? <laughs> uh, you, you, you can switch. Okay. I'm, um, yeah, Brooklyn, go to camera one. Uh, Sadie, come on stage right about, uh, right over here on the left side, on the top deck. Still on the carpet though. Yep, yeah, right, right there. And, and do you have two on, Adam? 
Yeah, they should all be on. Let's see what two looks okay. like. Um, There's two. Brooklyn, go ahead and give me a medium shot on Sadie. Medium close up. Which is just about above the belt, is what we called our medium shot. Oh, well, good lord. Um, Adam, can you gain camera two down, please? <laughs> Sorry. Oh my gosh, that is very high gain. Which we're gonna go over gain in ISO. Cool. Momentarily. Okay, um, go to camera one. That's what I'm talking about. So leave them there. So camera one, focused right here on Sadie. And actually go ahead and letterbox it because this is worship. It's a little less of this during the message because we're all focused at the same person but different angles. But if, if I look at this, if I look at your shot of Sadie right there, which looks great. Yeah. Um, all of a sudden, go to camera two, Adam. Whoa. I've just taken the same person with like a slight variation and it doesn't look it's like black. creative. What's even, like, what's what's even worse is, uh, go ahead, Brooklyn, and pan left. Go ahead and put, go ahead and put Sadie on the left side of your frame. Like right on your left tic-tac-toe, perfect. Um, all right, now Adam, go to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's like nauseating. Like what, I almost get cross-eyed, so. And, all, and also, in the context of a band, I've got up to like eight to nine different people on the stage. And like, it's bad enough when it's a, when it's a, worship leader, but you get moments sometime where you've got like, I've got the drummer, and then I've got the second person zooming in on the drummer at the same time, which is even crazier. Um, go, go ahead and go back to one. And then uh, uh, Brooklyn, go ahead and pull out again, uh, back to like uh, the shot we had before, like getting me and Adam like down full here. Full stage. Yeah, just a, just a full stage shot. Perfect. Thank you, Sadie. Thank you, Sadie. Thank you, Brooklyn. You can come back now. So those are, that's ghosting. <laughs> but yeah, that's ghosting. why in that moment, if, if, if the camera one shot of Sadie there was good enough for what we were looking for and it was the shot that the direct, director felt like they needed in that moment, he'd probably tell camera two, bounce. And all that means is that's a much quicker way of saying, hey, camera two, find somebody other than Sadie. Like, when we're live and we're fast, especially during worship, like times of the essence. Mm -hmm. So we, it's kind of a shorthand we've just created in a moment like camera two, bounce, which is just go, some, go to somebody else. Yeah, your shot's good, but we just can't use it right now. Um. And you might have a moment like, you might have a moment when you're on camera, camera three, for instance. I could be capturing like gold and I don't, like, I'm not worried about that, but, like, I could have this really good shot of Adam right here. And Every like, shot of Adam's a good shot of Adam. I'm a big fan of it and everything, and, like, I felt good. And I'm sitting here, and I'm sitting here, and I never see my shot on the screen. <laughs> and I start to think, what, does he not like my shot? Am do I not, not doing like good? Do I not like you as a person? Do I, like, do I not like... Did you take this personally? Is Adam hate me? Like, why is he not using my shot? Like, what's <laughs> going on? Um... That's one of the things we talk about when we talk about the chemistry of the team is we're all really secure in knowing that, hey, everybody on this team is here for a reason. Everybody on this team is here and is trusted. Um, and so we just like, one of the things we like to really talk on Sundays is like, hey, don't take it personal. Um, if we don't like your shots as directors, we will tell you um, because like we want to help you improve them. Um, but there's never a moment where any of our directors are ignoring any shots. Right. So, go for it. Uh, okay, let's, uh, let's talk about, oh, any questions? Yeah. Well, let's talk about camera movement and just, we're gonna go over the different types of ways you can move your camera. Um, these are, ex I think, correct me if I'm wrong, these should exclusively be used for worship. I don't think, uh, the message or the, these are mostly worship related. Yeah, this is mostly creative talking. This isn't like what we like to call teaching mode. This is worship creative mode. 
Um, bottom line, uh, I always try and uh, explain this to my team whenever I'm video directing, but during worship, like your shot should always be moving. The, the question is how fast or slow. Uh, and that's why I always try and coach people, listen to the music, listen to the worship music that's going on, and that should guide you on how dramatic your emotions are. If we're in the middle of oceans and it's like just keys and all the lights are down, probably not going to ask for a lot of whip pans or crash zooms or rack focusing and stuff like that, which we'll go over all that. But it probably, you still, like if I were a camera two, let's say, I'd still want like this really dramatic uh, pull out from the zoom just to help like, Add a little bit of dynamics to that. Like to that slow moment. little zoom like this, just like. <laughs> now you're just showing off. Now I'm just showing off. Um, so uh, let's get the slide back up. We'll talk about the. These are the different things that can hold a camera, at least that have uh, right now or in the past in this room. We got tripods. We all know what that is. Handheld. You all have got two built on. Gimbal. We're gonna start using that a lot more often. Uh, that is just a stabilizer. Um, it's in the back. You put your camera on it, and you can shake the handle around, but the camera, just kind of like a chicken head, just stands still as you move the chicken around. The, the, the key with the gimbal is um, going to the gym and start doing some good arm workouts. <laughs> um, and that's why we've introduced the scorpion a little bit more, because the gimbal is heavy. Like, there's no way around it. Like, adding a stabilize The thing that helps stabilize a camera shot, more often than not, is, is weight. Because you're counterbalancing the camera's weight and your own movements. Um, and so it can, like, as we load on a camera, the stabilizer, the wireless, the batteries, which themselves can be pretty bulky and heavy sometimes, occasionally a monitor, occasionally other things, like... It adds up quick, and our, I, the, our, the gimbal rig can be close to, I don't know, 12 to 15 pounds when all loaded out. Mm -hmm. um, but it's so worth it because those shots look amazing. In this ministry, you know, there's always that meme that says, never skip leg day, right? <laughs> In this ministry, we say never skip arm day because on Sunday, it will show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it will show. You will feel it. When do mix you 75 and everybody's arms will be ready. Yes. Uh, so we got the gimbal, Dolly. Uh, Dolly, Dolly might make a comeback soon. That's just, uh, if you guys remember when we had the train tracks in front, we had the little skateboard card on it for the sliding camera. We can't really Sorry. do it in here because of uh, now that there's people back in the room, like we don't have a lot of space for it because if you can imagine us calling somebody forward to the light bulb sign and they've got a, they've got, Got to wait for the train to pass. Yeah. Choo -choo. Um, but we actually bought a motorized dolly that we might play around with on stage for drums or those kind of things. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we got a crane. We're probably not going to have a crane back in a while, but that is another option uh, that we have. So it's the crane small. would only work with one specific camera of ours, and it was our lowest quality camera. Um, and so in order, to, in order to put one of our newer, you know, heavier, nicer looking cameras on a crane, uh, we got to buy a new crane and we're talking a few, couple thousand. Yeah. So. It'll happen eventually. Yeah. Um, you, what's funny is you watch the cranes of the bigger churches that have, you literally see a set of like, like the weight plates like you'd have at the gym that you put on the end are like down at the bottom with you while you're holding, like helping balance it out. So it gets a little crazy. So that's why we don't have, that's why we don't have a crane anymore is because we just, we, we, we don't want to do it unless we can do it right. And right now we can't do it right. Um, okay, so let's go over uh, what kind of motion uh, we can get from each of these devices, starting with the most basic uh, tripod. We can't walk around like we have with a lot of these examples of the tripod, obviously. That's the point of a tripod is to... You want me to go to camera two? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, our options are pretty limited, but you can still get a lot done with a tripod. So you're live, Dan. Let me zoom out. Um, so with these cameras, you got your pan, you got your tilt, got your pan zoom, tilt zoom, pan tilt zoom, 
Tilt pan zoom. So let me unlock. Zoomy zoom zoom. Let me unlock my, my tripod real quick. Got a good pan going left to right. Mm -hmm. If I'm doing a song like Oceans again, I'm not really doing this. <laughs> yeah, please no. Um, got my tilt if I want to go up to the drums. Um, they don't also always have to be straight up and down. Right. I could be tilting up while panning to the left. I can be tilting down while panning to the right. Or would I prefer combine all three? Pan, tilt, zoom at the same time. So yes. I'm, I want to go from Adam right here. I want to go to a really nice shot on the drums. So I'm going to be moving, panning to the left, tilting up, and doing a slow zoom at the same time to mm -hmm. get focused on my drum kit. And if it's a faster song, I might go a little bit faster. But the goal should be I never want my shot when it's during worship and during a creative moment. I never want just this to be my shot. Bah. Like just a vocalist, just a guitarist. Even if if I want to focus on Adam, I might do a little bit of a little bit of tripod movement, a little bit of zooming out, like yep. whatever it takes to keep this to keep the shot from being in one place. That includes camera one, even though we say all the time, camera one, just stay on the worship leader or whatever. Like you can still do. Like Mary did an awesome job at this last week. You can still do slow zoom outs, pushing in, slow circles, like, and you can still get really dynamic, interesting shots while still staying on the same subject the whole time. Uh, okay, so that's uh, tripods. Got your pan, tilt, zoom. Let's talk about handheld cameras. We got our whip pans. This is uh, from Dan. Call me 007, zero framing, zero focus. Seven whips while I'm live. Yep, just whips on air. Here's a good example. Boom, boom, baby. Live whip. We go from one subject to another. Um, so yeah. go five? Yeah, yeah, we'll go five. I'm going to do a whip from Adam to Kevin. So I'm focused on Adam mm -hmm. and... Boom, look at I'm how exciting there. that was. Bam. I'm ready. I'm right Again, on him. we're not doing this while Oceans is happening. We do this like while really hyped up songs happen or at the really exciting part of a song. And the, 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 crazy, the biggest thing about a whip is I have to vision in my mind where I'm going before going there. Because mm -hmm. the worst is if I'm starting right here and I'm, I'm going to whip to Adam, but I'm like, I went too far. Now I got to go back. And I basically just whipped to that can of compressed air. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I have to think in my mind live, okay, I know where Adam is. I'm live on him. And you know, my feet are planted and I'm moving a little bit so that, again, my shot's not still. But I know I want to go to Kevin. So while I'm here, I'm looking in my mind. I already know where Kevin is. Um, and then I see that there's a tripod on my way. So I know I can't do that. So I'm going to whip to Mary instead. Um, so I kind of vision out, okay, I know where Mary is in the room, um, and before I'm ready to go to her, I, I know kind of where my stop point is, so I'm going to friggin' whip to Mary. What's up, fools? <laughs> and I'm ready because I, knew, because, I knew, because I had a target. The worst is trying to do a whip with no destination in mind because then you're just, oh, that sometimes happens in conjunction with my favorite shot in the world, which is I'm live on Adam, I'm live on Adam. I'm bored with Adam, so I just like <laughs> drop my camera and I'm like, okay, now I want to go to the drums. I want us to actually, especially our handheld operators, I want us to start thinking about this differently. If I'm Adam, if I'm if I'm here and I'm on Adam, and Adam's the video director, um, and he I would be in the back booth if I was video yeah, director. And he and I pretend he cuts away from me, and I know I want to go, like the next person I'm getting to is Mary. A lot of times what will happen is we'll wait till we're off air and just kind of get to Mary when we can and have all of this in the meanwhile. And then I'm framed on Mary and then I'm trying to get the perfect shot and then I'm zoomed in. A better way to think about it is I want my camera to be 95% of the time ready for the video director to take it live if they need to. And what that means is if I know I'm, Adam here, I'm on Adam and I want to get to Mary... Like, even if I'm not live, I want to walk and act as if I'm live. I want to get to Mary with a purpose. So I'm going to be continuing as I know where Mary is. I'm going to, like, try to get to her. Like, I'm going to, if she was on stage, um, Brooklyn, go get, get on stage again and go to the uh, lead guitar platform. Because that's easier than a, I never, usually I'm not going to have a subject behind me. <laughs> so this is a better example. 
I'm on Adam, and I want to get to Brooklyn. So instead of taking all these complicated steps to get to Brooklyn, as I'm leaving Adam, like I'm trying to get to her as quickly as I can and do nice smooth frames and get her in focus. And even if during that time, like <laughs> even if during that time my camera shot's not live, I still want to have like a good looking shot that it would be okay for Adam to, to keep live and take even while I'm trying to find somebody new. Like if I'm doing a shot like this where I'm, I'm zooming a little out to get to him, doing a calm, like a calm zoom in, that's an okay shot for him to take like while I'm getting from subject to subject. So a lot of that thought is even if you're not whipping is how am I like trying to get, trying to get my subject in a good place at all times? And it requires a lot more thought, which is why our worship sets are 20 minutes and not an hour. <laughs> yeah. um, you can go back to your slide, Joe. I think that's a great way of thinking about it. Like I'm, especially, especially on the, if I'm, it's a lot easier to do a whip if I have a stabilizer on me. But um, the biggest things are like, if I'm gonna do, go, go ahead and go back to five. A couple things that I'm looking at are while I'm doing this, I'm not really gonna be moving my feet a whole ton like this because I'm losing the ability to balance. Like if I'm gonna pivot, like I might pivot slightly, but, or I might go from Brooklyn to Adam and like, oh, see, I missed, my, I missed my target. I didn't know where he was. So I'm here and I'm gonna go to Adam. Like, part of it is like, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to do all, yeah, all the body motion with my head and my arms and really the tops of my shoulders. I'm not really gonna be like whipping with my feet because that's gonna like lead to a little bit of a choppy shot and it's hard to land all the time when you're doing that. Especially because I might whip, like, wh when I'm live on Adam, I'm not, like, do -si do two-stepping because I don't have a stabilizer here. So if I'm do -si do two-stepping on Adam, like, I'm all over the place, and that's, like, a little jarring to watch. So I'm going to find ways to, like, the motions in my elbows and my hips here because I have the ability to stabilize Adam. And then when I'm ready to go to Brooklyn, I'm just going to keep my feet planted Turn my shoulders, get to her. Yeah, cool. when, uh, when you're on a handheld camera and you don't have a stabilizer while you're live, you should have both of your feet planted because we're going to run into what I like to call the earthquake effect, which, Dan, let's actually take that lens off. Which one you want? This one. Telephoto! Yes, that's what your camera can looks you, like can without you, a lens. Can you, uh, you want to bat cat me while I'm working on this? Wee. I'm letting all the light in. We got about like 30 okay, minutes left. Do you want to do some like hands-on trial and error? Everyone gets a chance. Let's get through this section real fast. Okay. So that lens was a 24 to 70 millimeter. This lens's focus length right here is starting where that length where that lens ends. So that if that lens if I'm zoomed in all the way on that lens, it's the same as this lens being zoomed in all the way out. And what's wild is, yeah, the closer you get zoomed in, the harder it is to stabilize. And that, that has in-lens stabilization too. So even with that turned on, the more you zoom in, it's going to get shaky fast. And that's why typically... Uh, I don't whip with a telephoto. <laughs> I mean, it's like trying to... like. Yeah, it's trying to snipe a rifle something across a football field with like a BB gun. It's, it's like you've got such a, a tiny target. Usually with the, the longer lens, we'll have maybe sometimes a little bit farther back or we'll have it on the tripod. Or with photography, we make sure certain settings are in place to where it doesn't get shaky. Or I'm doing something like this where I'm keeping the camera as close to my body as possible. Yeah, three points of contact, hand, hand, and torso. Or cool. forehead. Or chin, I don't Sweet. know. Give me uh, so that's the earthquake effect, and that um, that uh, should influence your choice of lens when um, when you're picking out lenses, whether it's going outside or in here. Um, 
Yeah, let's, uh, you want to do some hands-on stuff? Yeah, what else you got in here? Just, we can go over, we don't really need to go over parallax. We can, but it's like not. It'd be a little more if we had the gimbal. Yeah. I want to see that Sonic video <laughs> yeah. though, because it's getting me very <laughs> okay. intrigued. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about gimbal dolly movement. Um, so that, the main type of motion with that is a side-to-side -side motion. Because when you have a gimbal, you can walk wherever you want while your shot is live. And it actually has some really cool effects. Uh, and my favorite one being the parallax effect. And all that means, um, you guys ever go on road trips where you're like driving down the highway and you see the trees like right next to your car going by like super blurry, but then you can look past and the back row of trees is like going really slowly. Or you look at behind the mountains, they're going super slow in comparison. That's what's called parallax. It just means that the different objects as you travel, or in this case the camera travels side to side, they travel at different rates. The objects closer to you travel by much faster, and the objects far away from you go much slower. So this is kind of a silly example, but uh, a r still a really good one is as you watch the trees go by, see how fast they go by, but look at the clouds in the background. They're still moving, but it's way slower. And so this is a really good example of parallax. Just super quick foreground. Sonic Super boom. slow background. Here's I hope this was a recording of you playing. No. <laughs> I haven't played Sonic in a long time. Yeah, you're hitting way too many rocks, brother. Yeah. Uh, here's another example. Uh, you see, like, epic opening shots of movies, like, over a cityscape, and you see, look at the back. Um, this is kind of the opposite, where our foreground stays the same and our background's moving around. This is what's called an orbiting shot, but it's still parallax because we got the background and the foreground moving uh, contrary to what, it. What movie was that? I have no idea. I don't know. Any, well, pfft, that's not, I don't want to see that. <laughs> a any questions before we just mess around a little bit? All right. Let's, uh, let's hop on a camera. You want to play video director for a little bit? I'll play director for a little bit. All right. Uh, we can actually talk a little bit about tripod uh, logistics. Um, most of our cameras except five and six rest on tripods, even though three we can dismount. Um, you can see on cameras one, two, and four, they've got little knobs on the left side of the tripod head, right underneath where the camera is. Kevin, that'll be on your right side. That one's backwards. And those are the brakes. Uh, so those allow, um, whenever you leave your camera or whenever we're done for the day, we tighten those all the way to the right, and that way our, our cameras won't budge. It's safer. They won't dip down if they're not balanced. Um, so we want to make sure that that is loose on, I'm pretty sure it's the left side of all, yeah, of four, one, and two. Um, and then, yeah, what I always like to check when, um, the first thing you do once you're on a tripod, make sure you can draw nice and easy circles with your camera. Make sure it's not too tight one direction or the other. Thank you, Brooklyn. So I'm trying to adjust my... Uh... Yeah, I'm about to. Yep. And we're going to go ahead. Yep. Hold your box. Um, so in front of you on the camera, um, on your tripod, like right below the camera, but in front, there should be a little, a little, a little lever. little thing. Uh, it's, it's, it's on your side. It's of on the your side. It's on the back of the tripod head. And it's kind of next to where that gear thing is in the middle. It's a little, it's about the size of like your thumb, just twist it over to, I think you got to twist it to the right. That should let your camera dip up and down. Let me take a look. Let's see. It's playing around. One quick look. Let you play around a little bit. <laughs> Let's go to five real quick. Oh, all over. The, 
we, the reason we renumbered because for a while we were just, um, you know, we had eight at one point, and then we knocked we knocked two out. And we were changing around, um, and we just hadn't renumbered. So we finally like went back and renumbered. So that's actually a good point um, for everybody to remember. Um, if you have if you're not on cameras a ton, um, knowing your number is always huge because. Nine times out of the out of ten, the director is probably not going to call you by name, just because like, it's not because we don't know you. It's because when I'm looking at my monitor, camera two doesn't say Brooklyn; it says camera two, and I'm not going to change it to say Brooklyn every week. <laughs> so, um, camera one is our camera in the back that Shay is currently on. Camera two's primary focus, hundred percent of the time, is. Somewhere in your shot has to be whoever is in charge of that moment. Camera one. Camera one, that's what I meant. Yeah. So if if a song if a song on stage is being led by Marlena, camera one has to have Marlena in their shot at all times, no exceptions. Whether it's zoomed in or out. Because what happens is camera one is what I call my hero shot. Um, you're my safety. So if if we're doing a song and all of a sudden Marlena starts talking. Well, I need to be able to have her on camera because I need people to see that she's talking. And it's weird if Mar's trying to talk to the crowd and I'm just on the bass player. And I don't want to have to wait till somebody gets back to Mar. So one is always there. Camera two, which is the camera that Brooklyn's currently on um, and the camera that I'm going to go live with. Um, what would you say two's responsibility is, Adam? Oh, You're a better namer of this. Uh, it's kind of like... Um... I don't know. It, it's it's kind of like a, a grab bag. You can do a lot of things with camera two. Usually, uh, I stay away from the back line, meaning um, the instruments, just because they're not lit as nicely as the vocalists from that particular part of the room and that angle that the lights are hitting. But that camera also does wide shots really well. I used that a lot the last time I was video directing where I was asking Jared, zoom all the way out and then do like a slow tilt down and zoom in. Um, and that's a really nice shot. You can also do some of the wider shots of vocalists. You can just get anything pretty much besides what camera one's doing, which is most of the time that medium shot on, uh, on the worship leader. Yes, that is beautiful. An inspiration to us all. all right, let's talk about camera three. Camera three is the camera that Kevin is currently on. Um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make that one live. Um, camera three is really unique because since you're in the pit, um, your elevation, all the other cameras, one, two, and four, everybody except for the, uh, for the roamers, um, camera three is at a much different elevation than those other cameras. So whereas camera two is kind of looking down at the band, camera one is almost looking down at the band as well, unfortunately. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Camera three has this unique ability to be down up close and personal with the band. And because and it's it our first again. handheld camera, you can really play around with different heights of your shot. So Kevin can get up at like head level with himself or he can do the top handle and get down low. One of my favorite parts about camera three is, yeah, you can have the subject in your foreground, but you can get away where... Um, Find an angle where you can get lights of the stage in the background, and then you can get some really nice lens flare from that. Whenever a light source is poking directly into your lens, that causes a really nice lens flare. It's really uh, cool. Mariah, can you actually, t if the console's working, can we get like some of the grid on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Kevin, see if you can get a shot where like one of these spotlights is actually piercing and like I see there's light over here or uh, I mean like if if you stand over there okay. point your camera this way so I'm in the foreground and then you get that light see yeah how it's <laughs> that's like super delicious we love that it's just fun uh, and that's something that you can't always get depending on where your camera is. And that's one, definitely one of the strengths of, of camera three, five, and six. But, uh, okay, I, and, 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 but you're not too far over. Okay, you have 
here's the sign and the cue. The composition is 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 good because and you'd probably have another singer standing right here, so there would be more to your composition this as well. Is during worship. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, yeah. got it. Okay. Yeah, during the sermon, you're on a tripod, uh -huh. and you're typically going to be, you know, a, a, like, a, like a medium close-up on the pastor from the side. Okay. Um, we, during the message, we're using camera one and two like 90% of the time, okay. and we're sprinkling the other ones in for just a little bit of like creative extra. Mary, I think one of those things. Yeah, I want to do something fun. So with camera one, this happened to me this Sunday. Uh -oh. So I think it'd be really fun to show <laughs> real life what can happen. Six foot two dude standing here, raising his hands, and it was totally blocking Marlena's face like that. And, I, you know, people sway. Go ahead and mm. zoom in on Adam, camera one. Yeah, go ahead. Give us like a... Cowboy, a little less headroom. So you can tilt down a little bit. There you Very go. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. So see, my my hand and my body is in focus now. Can you try to put Adam in focus? That'll be that left knob on your left hand. Yes, yeah. that's beautiful. So see, like you can play with this too. Like you could rack focus the people worshiping, then to, uh, not Marlena, Adam. Same thing. But kind of Marlena. <laughs> More so, loud. like, you can play with the people in the audience, especially if you're camera five or camera six. You can kind of show, like, from their view, and it really does help online to feel like they're in the room. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It plays back to those awesome photography examples we showed earlier, that foreground and background. Let's go to camera four real quick. One of my favorites. I love camera four. It's, uh, like I was talking about earlier, this is a great um, example of, showing people the environment that we're in. You can get the stage lights, you can get the whole band in one shot, you can even get sometimes the audience. And it just really helps people who aren't in the room feel like they're in the room. Or even in other venues, we've gotten really good feedback from like um, our 1030 service when we just flash the camera up on the wide shot just for like five seconds. Camera top. four is the exception to my no side screens rule. Yeah, And it's because like you're capturing the entire environment and the screens are part of the environment in here, blanket or not. So usually you're going to probably on that camera four shot get one or more of the screen. But that's actually a good point is when you're zoomed all the way out like that, you're worried a little, you don't have to worry as much about that infinite screen effect because if you, if you look at the screen on the left side while you're on that shot, like if you're looking into the screen that's in the camera shot, you can't see it's so far back that it's minuscule. Yeah. So it's this camera four when it's that far back is like the one real exception to that. Don't get the screens in your shot rule. It actually helps a little more if you get the whole screen as opposed to a corner of the screen on that shot because it helps it look more like finished in the room. Uh, who's on five? Sadie. Sadie, before I put you live, go ahead and find a, uh, find a cool angle of Adam or something fun. Actually, let's do this. Get on stage, Sadie. I want to say a lot. You're doing great. Go ahead and stand over kind of by the drum kit. Camera calisthenics. And I want to get a, like, I want to get a reverse shot of Adam. Yeah, that's a good spot for one. <laughs> that, that's, that's probably that, a good spot That right works. There. And I want you to actually try to, while you're doing that shot of Adam, see if you can get from there, see if you can get Mary in the shot too. A little bit. See if you can get me. That, oh, that, yeah. that, that's what I'm talking about. So during worship, what's cool about these kind of shots, we don't get to do these enough during worship, and I want to. And the reason is, is again, it goes back to what Mary was just talking about, about being part of the experience. I'm right now, even though if, if Adam's leading this song right now, I don't necessarily need to see his face in this moment. I don't want to stay on the shot for like 30 seconds. But right now what I've done is I've just like, even though I'm keeping Adam in that shot and in focus, I've now taken you, the viewer, who's probably more likely at home or in another location, you're now in the room and you can see, oh yes, like the, there are people that are worshiping along with this that are part of this. Like it kind of gives me a little more freedom and permission to be a part of it too. Mm -hmm. 
It's the same as like, go ahead and, uh, I'll, I'm going to take you off air. Go ahead and come back down here, Sadie. You know, that's a lot of running. Think of is we'll cut to camera four when the audience is interacting, like responding to Sean, right? I've seen Adam do that before. Sometime. And uh, it's for the same purpose. Like you feel like you're in the room, you're laughing when they laugh. Um, go ahead and I want you actually to get a shot of Mary worshiping. So get into the song, babe. Like from behind? Um, actually, uh, from side. That's okay, because check it out. What's happening, if I've got a few people in that shot right now, again, it's not something I wanna stay on for very long, but if you watch some of your, um, if you go and watch some like live worship videos from like Bethel and stuff like that, you have these moments where again, I've now taken my audience and helped make them a part of more than just the music that's happening, they're now a part of the entire experience. Um, yeah, I, at the, at the beginning of COVID, I strayed away from these because like we weren't allowed technically to have people in the room. So I wasn't doing any. <laughs> um, and like, I didn't wanna start the argument online of people about who's wearing a mask and who's whatever. But we're at a spot now where like, I actually like for camera three and some of my roamers every once in a while, if you see something cool happening in the crowd, if you see people really into it, or again, if you see somebody walking down to go give Sean a hug and accept Jesus, like we want to make people a part of those moments. So like Mary, go ahead and walk down the aisle here right okay. now to accept Jesus. And I want, um, I want Kevin to actually try to get that moment from camera three. So Is right here okay? During, yeah. Yeah, so... During, during response song, camera three will actually stay mounted on the tripod just because we want a clear path. So at this point, Kevin, your camera would actually be, or you can take it off, but you'll be still standing at your tripod. You won't be roaming around once mm -hmm. the first worship set is done. So we're on Adam right here. We're focusing on, on the worship leader on this moment. And then all of a sudden, Mary comes down to accept Jesus. The crowd I'm, goes I'm yeah. sure she's going to come hug me. People are clapping, and I'm going to actually go catch that for a second I'm as crying. she's coming up to I'm Sean. Crying. And hey, welcome to the family of God. Wow. Like, <laughs> come get a holy Greet kiss. each other with a holy kiss. Sign. Or, uh, and, and I'm not going to stay on that a ton, but. Can you guys do that again? <laughs> <laughs> do it again. Really, also, do it, it again. might be cool if. <laughs> <laughs> it might be cool if Sadie, camera five, what are they going to do after they walk down? Yeah, they're going to go to the light bulb moment. Yeah. So even if you want to be ready for that, that's cool too. There's a lot to be said during the response and during those times in service about like knowing and anticipating what's happening in the room, being aware of your surroundings. Because as, as video director, I can't always see people walking forward. Like right. I don't know about those moments until you show me. And so um, uh, we're back to worship. Mary is accepting Jesus. She's coming on down. Um, do you want to do the switching for this real quick? Um, she's the next contestant on the Christ is Right. Keep down, coming the down. The Christ is Right. And all of a sudden, like, we got this cool moment in worship. Yeah. It's coming down. Thank you for accepting Jesus. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, Sean wouldn't kiss me. Hey, why don't you go ahead tonight, and hey, like, accept, we're going to go pray together, cut back to the worship leader for a bit. Um, Michael, we <laughs> worship, singing a song. I'm gonna walk her over to the sign and like, we're gonna spend a little moment in prayer real quick. Like, dear God, I thank you for her. And we're gonna cut to camera five, seeing this really cool moment, like being a part of this with the crowd. Um, go and then uh, we're gonna go back to camera two, back to the worship here. And then <laughs> maybe camera, camera two, one. you can have some maybe movement, come on. Movement. And then Mary's Change it gonna, up a little, please. Remember, your chat's yeah. gotta be dynamic, people. And then dynamic. Mary's gonna come over here and she's gonna screw her light bulb into the sign. So like, oh, as can she's turn having it on? this moment. Can you turn I, it on? Can I, I don't turn think it's it plugged on? in. It's not plugged in. It's not plugged in, right? Because they Wait. moved it for the for the event. They had an event today. So she's going to plug in her side. But this still looks cool. So go ahead and like, turn your screw in the sign. Okay. Uh. And imagine there's light here. But she's going there. And then we're going to go back to the worship team for a second. And then we might go back to that light bulb moment yeah. one more time. Go to five. Uh, that's what you're disconnected. Uh, that happens. Wait. So I think it was this one. It's Okay. So that right there is like a perfect example of having a dynamic service and taking a moment that's like, 
taking this really special moment of what's happening during worship and connecting people to more than just the music. All of a sudden, we, we get the coolest feedback from people when we do this, when we get people like, when we get these moments of people coming to accept Jesus on camera, what we've now done is we've shown everybody at home, like, and even beyond people at home, like Mary screwing in the sign, all of a sudden the person in the back row back there now gets to see what's happening up here. Now they get to experience what the people in that front row got to experience. And it's just super cool. Like it's really awesome to get to see that together. Um, we just question. we just got to be careful, and that sometimes, and this is within context. Sometimes it's unavoidable, and sometimes it's not a big deal. What Dan was referring to earlier is if you have another operator walking between your camera and the subject, then that's like a what the heck moment. But if you're just in the background and it's dark, and our whole camera team is always wearing all black, then it's not a big deal because <laughs> so, you blend in. We have all the if, time. We've got people shooting on camera one and. Like, so, like we were saying earlier, when yeah. camera five sneaks in the background, like technically they're in the other shot, but you can, they're not an eyesore. So if Kevin's on me right now, go ahead and go ahead and focus on me right now. Um, if Kevin's here, like, and he's got me in the shot and there's a little bit of Sadie right there, yeah, it really doesn't matter. Like it's, it's actually kind of okay because it's also a reminder like, this is the real world. And like we're in, like, especially for a moment like this, it's a reminder that like, we're in this part together, like we're all doing this, like the tech team's in it with us, not, not just the pastor. Um, and then um, yeah. like, it's okay, but yeah. Then what happens is if we know, if we know that, that three is live, which you'll hear because you'll hear the video director you know, go camera three, um, I know that if I'm the roamer, like I'm not gonna come over here and walk in front of Kevin because <laughs> yeah. he's live. Go, go for it. Go ahead and walk in front of us. This is more what we're referring to. Like, if you realize that you've got somebody who's on, like, this is what I go back to being aware of your surroundings. Because yes. the moment you see that Kevin's got the camera here, even if we were on camera two, even if we weren't live, like, you got to know, hey, he's pointing at me. So whether he's live or not, I'm going to avoid walking in front of that shot. You never, ever want to walk in front of somebody's shot. So it's okay if the subject is, like, sandwiched between you. It's, it's, it's okay. And we try, and, you know, we'll try to, like, we might tell you, like, hey, Sadie, move over a little bit. You're like, camera five, move to the right. Like, it's okay. Um, but, like, I wouldn't, like, I like this shot. Like, I, I'm not mad at that shot. Like, I'm okay with you being in that shot. It's, it's, it's cool. You're part of this moment, too, because, like, we're, it's kind of that moment where we are breaking the fourth wall a little bit. If you've never heard the term breaking the fourth wall, have you ever watched a TV show where um, the, audio, the, the person on camera acknowledges that they're in a TV show? Or you watch a movie where you have like a narrator happening and the narrator knows they're part of a show? That's what's called breaking the fourth wall is all of a sudden like we're all aware that we're in this together this is kind of us doing that live. Like the people at home now know, oh, like, yeah, I'm, I'm not a part of some like magic universe here. Like we're in this, this is happening, this is real. Yeah. Well, we are, uh, we are at the end of our time. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to camera one here. And um, let's all go ahead and come on forward and uh, come hang out back together. Light up. Uh, don't forget, before you leave your tripods, tighten the same things you untightened. Never leave your camera without doing that. Shay, go ahead and zoom in on me and Adam real quick a little bit before you leave. Yep. No, leave it on. Yeah. I'll, I'll take a look at it. Thank you. Before we end off, does anybody have any last questions? Hello. Aside from Siri? <laughs> anybody got any other questions? Sweet. 
<laughs> Did you guys <laughs> feel like uh, this was useful? Yeah. Was it fun? Yes. Good. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. Well, let's uh, let's go ahead and pray, and then we will uh, we'll be wrapped up, and we'll see a lot of you guys Sunday, and we'll uh, we'll let you guys also know when the next uh, what our next training is going to be. So, let's pray. Father God, we uh, we are so thankful that we get to express our love for you through creativity. Um. And uh, God, we know that what we do on a Sunday on this team um, isn't just art for the sake of art. Um, this is us getting to help communicate the gospel. Um, and God, I pray that we, re- we, we keep that at the forefront of everything we do, that we remember that every time we point a camera at somebody, every time we, we frame somebody in a shot, we are pointing people, helping point people to Jesus. We are helping communicate the gospel all across the world. So Father, would we, like, would we through that, like as we, as we realize that and as we, as we walk our day-to-day with that knowledge, God, would we, uh, would we enjoy what we do? Um, God, will we continue to be thankful that you've given us these gifts together? Would we continue to refine these gifts? To, God, just build our excellence to, God, keep doing our best to point people. And above all, Father, would you be glorified through the work of this team? We love you, Father. It's your name we pray, amen. Awesome. Thanks, guys, so much.